we're gonna be building Space Invaders. Well, our kind of simple version of it. Because even though this video game was built in 1978, can you believe that? It was phenomenal. And watch, watch this game, it's so addicting. You're the character at I died instantly, come on, I'm a master. Let's shoot these guys. Ah, and those invaders are attacking. You really have to protect your planet. So are we gonna build this exactly? No, can you build it exactly? Perhaps, let's see. So what is our space invaders gonna look like? It's gonna look like this. Well, I use space tacos. Awesome, check this out. Space Invaders was one of my favorite games as a child. And building it is a lot of fun because we can practice cloning. What are we gonna clone? Everything, we're gonna clone the missiles that shoot and the space invaders that are attacking. Lots and lots of cloning because there's lots and lots of sprites in this game. So let's go ahead and start off by building our blaster cannon. I don't know what the official name for it, it is, but I'm gonna draw it by using the paint. And then you can't see right here, I'm gonna choose this uh, square selector and I'll point this out. You see that little dot right in the middle? That's not a smudge on the screen. That's not a booger. That is actually the center of the sprite. So that's where the missiles are gonna come out of the blaster cannon. So we need to be very careful to make that the top of our cannon. So I'm gonna draw that and then I'm gonna draw the next layer. What am I drawing? I don't know, I'm just trying to recreate what I remember what Space Invaders, the blaster cannon looks like. And what's really fun is you can take this and you can select the whole thing and then you can change the gradient on it. Oh, uh, let's see, is there anything cool? That looks cool, I like that, I'm gonna go with that. Then I'm going to drag it down to the bottom where it's going to be and I'm gonna change the backdrop because it looks so boring and I know that this is gonna be Space Invaders, so it needs to be in space. Space City, these all look kind of distracting. I'm just gonna go with straight up stars. That looks pretty cool. Now let's go, be careful. We're in the backdrop right now. So if we tried to add code, we'd actually be coding the backdrop. And I, I know that because when I click on this code, it says motion. The stage is selected. There's no motion backdrop, mo no motion blocks. So to fix that, I'll go click on Sprite 1, and now I have those motion blocks. And the first motion block I want is this one that makes it kind of go to where I want it to start. Of course, I need an event like a when the green flag is clicked so that it will go to that position at the beginning of the game. Isn't that nice? Now we need to give it that left right movement. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Okay, do we wanna do it the clunky way where it's like, when the right arrow is clicked, then move 10 steps to the right. No, I do not want that kind of movement. In fact, I want this game to be mobile friendly. I want it to follow the mouse pointers X. So let's go in the motion and let's see if we can grab the, oh, we can only grab the X position of this sprite. I wanna grab the X position of the mouse pointer. That's actually in the sensing menu. There it is, mouse X, beautiful. This holds the value of wherever your mouse is. So this value can change as the game is played. Well, how do we use it? We use it by going to motion and we find set X. There we go. So we're gonna set the, this sprite's X to the same thing as the mouse X. Now this will actually not work and not work correctly unless you constantly are changing it. Constantly changing, constantly checking. How do you constantly do anything? Well, you wrap it in a forever loop. Watch this, it's beautiful. Now it will follow my mouse pointer and it will also follow my finger on a tablet, which is really nice for mobile friendly games. So we have the game ready to play. We just need to be able to shoot. So I want it, so when I click the mouse pointer, that goes pew pew and it shoots a little missile thing. Okay, so let's stop this game real quick and let's, let's start the next video on adding the missile. So we have our cool blaster cannon. When I click the green flag, it follows the mouse. Well, actually forever sets the X position of this sprite to the mouse 
X position. So it will actually follow your finger, which is really nice. Follow me, follow me. Okay, so we are going to be adding the blaster cannon and we will paint a new sprite for this. And just like when I drew the, the, the blaster, the, um, the missiles, let's see here. We can do a round circle. That seems like a good idea. We want to make it right in the center. See this little dot right here? We'll want the missiles to be right on that dot. This is actually quite difficult. Oh my goodness. If you make a mistake, just click this back in time. And I'm going to change the color of my missile to something more deadly, something more vicious. Bright red. That sounds good. And there it is. There. It's right in the center as best I could. And I'm going to go ahead and code it. Now, we're not going to be coding the blaster cannon to shoot. We're going to be coding, or well, putting our code on the actual missile or the bullet or whatever you want to call it. Isn't that, it kind of looks like a button nose. We're shooting Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer balls. <laughs> that is weird. So make sure we've clicked on the sprite that we're going to be coding. Click on code. And we'll say when the game starts, the event, we will make it hide. Why? Because I don't want to see it just right there. I want it hidden. So here we go. Hide it. Now, anytime you use hide, you're going to want to use a show and vice versa. So when are we going to show it? When we press the space bar. When we're not going to use a space bar in this game. We're using the mouse clicker. All right, good. So we don't have the event. So here's the deal. I'm going to teach you how to use the space bar, and then I will teach you how to use the mouse clicker for the shooting the bullet, the missile event. So we'll want to go to events, and we'll say when the space bar is pressed to show, and then we'll want it to go to sprite one. Oh, all these sprite ones, this and that. Let's call this sprite two. Let's call it missile, and let's call it sprite one. Let's call it Blaster Cannon. There. You can name it anything you want. It's just much easier to deal with. Okay, and then we need to for it to go to. Here it is. Go to, not random position. We want it to go to the Blaster Cannon. Let's see if that works. Press the space bar. It goes there. Oh, it's a button, nose, and two eyes. That's a Christmas song. And then after it goes there, then we want it to shoot all the way to the top. So this is the fun part. Go to Blaster Cannon and then move. Where is the move? It's going to be going up, so we're going to be changing the Y value. Change Y, and we want it to, to change the Y value until it hits the top. So let's go to um, Control, right? Repeat until, because we want to repeat until touching the top. Whoops, I have to take this apart. This is getting difficult. I want the change Y to be inside the repeat until, and now we need to put a condition in here that's going to be true or false. Okay, so let's go to sensing. They have this touching edge. I think that will be our best idea. So let's put this touching mouse pointer in here that has a drop down, and it says touching edge. I know, they hide a lot of stuff in here. Right there, till touching edge. So this should work. Let's see. I know, wasn't that simple? Boom. Boom. Pretty cool. And you can adjust the speed by changing this number right here. Now, when it hits, hits the edge or touches the edge, we want it to disappear. So let's just go make it hide. Looks. And we'll need that hide right here. So we'll put it at the bottom. There. Boom. Works pretty well, doesn't it? I like this. But you can't rapid fire. That's a big problem. Welcome to cloning. Cloning allows you to duplicate sprites and the code associated with them rapidly, like a rapid fire. So this is kind of clunky. Instead of, of just shooting one, let's have it clone. Go into control. At the very bottom, it says when I start as a clone and create clone of myself and delete this clone. Now, I need, 
a little more space for my coding. So I'm going to shrink the screen here, and I'm going to show you how all of these clone code blocks work. You need all three of them. If you use one, you have to use all three. So first of all, when are you going to create a clone of yourself? Whenever the space bar is pressed. So we just put that right here. Now, the other big rule about clones is clones or clones only listen to clone code. That sounded confusing. Basically, this right here. The clones don't listen to the start flag. They only listen to when I start as a clone. Okay, so if you don't have this when I start as a clone, the clones will just stand there and be like, we're not listening to you. So we'll attach this piece of code to that. <clears throat> And then instead of hiding the clone at the end, we'll need to delete them. Otherwise, they will all pile up. Even though you don't see them, they'll be at the top of the screen. Eventually, you'll have so many clones that the computer will start to run out of memory and break down. So we, we make sure we delete the clones at some point. Now, I think we have the proper code. I'm going to scroll this down so we can see how it looks. And I'll make it full screen so you can see what it looks like now when, look at that. Oh, it froze. Why? Because we kind of, I kind of spammed it. When, when you spam click, it tends to use up all the memory and freeze the computer. So one little trick I've learned is to add, oh, wow, it just unfroze. If that happens to you, let me show you how to fix that. Go ahead and add this wait one second right there. And then that should allow you to shoot without having the computer freeze. Just a little hack I learned. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Good luck adding your cloning blaster cannon. Now I promised that I would show you how to make it work with the mouse down. Click that mouse, click that mouse. Okay, so right now we're clicking the space bar. Let's leave that one there just in case they wanna use the space bar. But we need to, let's shrink this up right here. We need to have that mouse down event. There isn't a mouse down event. Go ahead, look in the events. You'll never find one. See this space bar? You can get all the keys on the keyboard that you want, but you can't get the mouse down. Mouse down is actually in the sensing menu right here. And mouse down is exactly the same as touching the screen on a tablet. So it's really useful. I wish Scratch would have just put it as an event. You have to create your own event. So go into control and say if, if mouse down, something will happen. Well, we want it to do this. We want to create clone of myself right there. And we'll need to wrap this in a forever loop. There we go. And we'll need to say when the game's, actually look at this, this code right here, we can actually attach it. It's not doing anything other than just hiding. So we can say, if mouse down, create clone of myself. Oh, there's one second between them. Okay, so obviously we didn't need this little hack right here. Let, let's see if it works. Dun, 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 dun. The big moment of truth. It works. It works really well. Oh, it's freezing up a little bit. I wonder if we put the wait zero seconds right here, if that would work. You'll have to kind of fiddle with that. Wow, this is so cool. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Let me just show you the code right here in the final screenshot so you can get an idea for what I built. There it is. Beautiful. Space invaders falling from the sky. Where? Let's blast them. Well, we haven't actually added any invaders yet to our game, so let's do that right now. Go ahead and add a new sprite, and you can choose anything you want. Yes, even tacos. That's my thing, not yours. Do your own thing. So, actually, it's just under taco. So I'm going to add my taco. I'm going to immediately do something that's terrible, make a taco smaller. Never make a taco smaller. Okay, so that taco is going to start at the top, and it's going to fall to the bottom, attacking me. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and add that code. Let's say in the events, we want to go to the top. So we'll grab the motion and we'll say go to, here we go. The, let's see in the middle. So the X position will be zero right in the middle. And the Y position will be 180, which is the very, very top. 
And of course, you remember that the very bottom is negative 180, don't you? You remember that? So I'll try that. Watch this. It'll put it right at the bottom. Cool. So basically, we want it to go from 180 down to negative 180. Did you follow that? That was pretty confusing. So what we'll use is the repeat until, because the repeat until is like a forever loop. It goes forever, but until a condition is met. Once this condition is met, whatever it is, it will stop the loop. So let's have that condition be whenever the taco reaches a point that is lower than negative 180, so less than. So that's a lot of words. How did you get so smart, Mr. Matt? Well, I went to school. Let's use the less than. So we're going to go less than negative 180, and that's in the operator's menu. And what is going to be less than 180? The Y position. This is a little tricky. Go in the motion blocks. Make sure you have the taco selected or whatever your bad guy is. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see something that says the Y position. This actually, if you check the box, you'll, you can see that it holds the value of the Y position of your sprite. And it will change depending on where the sprite is. So it's a perfect, it's kind of like a variable to use for this conditional. This conditional will fit right in here, and now it's going to check. It's going to repeat this loop until the Y position is less than 180, which means the taco is below the bottom of the screen. Now, what is it going to do? It's, we want the taco to be falling. So we're going to be changing the Y. Uh, let's see. That's going to be in motion. We're going to change Y. Where is change Y? Change Y by... Well, as fast as you want it to fall. If we do negative 5, it will fall fairly quickly. There. Now it's going to fall till it hits the bottom, and then it will stop. So we need to wrap this entire piece of code in a forever loop. There we go. Now it will do that sequence over and over again. Easy peasy. We can beat this game just by staying right here. So we need the the taco to actually start in a random position on the x-axis, the x being the left and right. Okay, so we'll go and grab that random number maker in the operators, and we'll replace this go to x position with negative 240, which is the farthest to the left you can go, to positive 240, which is the farthest you can go to the right. And that should, let's just hit the start flag, that should start it at a random location. Now, I don't need this to be showing anymore. So how do we get rid of it? Go back into, oh, that's in the motion section. Scroll to the bottom and then uncheck that. It's just kind of, you can, you can use these to verify where your sprites are. It's pretty handy, really advanced technique. Okay, it looks like it is falling in a random position. That's great, but it's just one at a time. I thought you said we were going to clone these. Yes, we are. Let's get to cloning. Now, our game's pretty simple right now. There's just one bad guy that falls in a random location, and I promised you that I would show you how to clone the bad guy so there's a whole bunch of bad guys you can shoot at. So let's do that. First of all, go in the control menu. That's where your cloning code is. At the very bottom, there are three important elements. Three. You, when I start as a clone, create clone and delete this clone. You have to use all three of them every time you're dealing with clones. Okay, so here is the code that makes the taco fall. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this forever loop, and I'm going to use this starting flag to create a clone of myself. Then I'm going to use the when I start as a clone to give directions to these clones that I'm making. And I won't need the forever loop because each time a clone falls from the sky and hits the bottom, it's going to delete itself and you'll see a new one appear up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this delete this clone at the very bottom here. There, I think I've used everything. When the game starts, create a clone of myself. When I start as a clone, then I will do this code, and once I've completed the code, I delete myself. So let's see if it does it one time. 
Perfect. Now, if you want this whole sequence to repeat, put the forever loop around create a clone of myself. But be careful. Hold on to your computer. Watch this. It's raining tacos. Yes. The reason why it's doing that is it's creating clones as fast as it possibly can. And computers are actually running forever loops very, very quickly, as you've noticed right here. So I'll need to slow this down with my favorite piece of code in the, actually it's in the control menu, the wait block right here. Depending on how many clones you want, you'll need to slow down this create clones. There you go. Now they're falling from the sky. But there is a big problem. This one, what, why is this one, this taco, just sitting right there? Well, when you create clones, there'll always be one sprite that isn't a clone. It's kind of like the mommy or daddy clone. It's like, okay, children, go ahead and listen to the clone code, but I'm not a clone. So what I typically do with this one is I hide it. Just go in the looks menu and grab that hide and show. Those are kind of partners as well. You always use a hide and a show together. So I'll say when the game starts, hide that one. And then when the clones are created, go ahead and show them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see that. But now it will work perfectly. In the next video, I'll show you how to shoot these because right now they're not going to react to the bullets. And there's also not a game over screen. There's all sorts of stuff we need to add. I'll see you in the next one. Our video game is starting to look really cool, but you can't shoot the bad guys. And those tacos are really attacking your planet or whatever. They're invading from space. So let's add some code that says that when the missile touches the tacos, that taco deletes itself and you get a point. So where, where do we wanna put this code? On the missile? Probably not. We'll wanna put it on the actual invader that's invading because we want it to delete itself when the missile touches it. So this is going to be another when I start as a clone event. So we'll need to go into the control menu down at the bottom and say when I start as a clone. You can have more than one events when I start as a clone, that's okay. When I start as a clone, I'm going to pretty much wait until the missile touches me. Now, the missile can only touch you one time. So we'll use a wait until rather than an if statement. Because remember, if you use an if block, you'll have to wrap it in a forever loop. That's kind of a mess. For something that's only gonna happen one time, the wait until is a beautiful thing. So we're gonna wait until it's touching the missile. So we'll go to sensing, wait until touching missile. And when that happens, we'll want the score to go up and we'll want the, the taco to delete itself. So two things, let's go make a variable that's gonna be the score, the points. I'm gonna say score, there we go. And now we have access to, well, we wanna increase the score. So we'll change the score by one. I'm gonna zoom this in so you can see. When I start as a clone, wait until touching missile, change the score by one, and then delete this clone. So that's in the control menu. You'll see at the bottom, delete this clone. There, let's see if that works. Can I shoot it? Boom, yes I can. Now, how, do you, how does the game end? Well, anytime a taco touches the, the blaster cannon, that's the signal for game over. Let's go ahead and add that code to the blaster cannon. Why? Well, I feel that there's a lot of code in the taco, and I really want the blaster cannon to have the ability to say, hey, game over, game started, game whatever. So let's add it to the blaster cannon. Let's say this, if it touches, well, if it touches any of the tacos, then it dies, well, then we can use a wait until. There we go, wait until touching taco, and then game over. Now, this is kind of an interesting idea. I'm waiting till a taco touches the blaster cannon. 
Does it matter which taco? Because there's like a million clones. It doesn't actually matter. This touching taco will work for any of the clones because right now I'm using, I'm coding for the blaster cannon. Wait until touching taco and then it's going to be game over. Let's actually, let's uh, send, since this is a blue belt, pretty advanced lesson, let's use messaging. So right here, we'll broadcast the message game over. New message, game over. There, and then after I brought, broadcast the message game over, let's go and have him blow up. What, blow up, that's awesome. How do you do that? It's a little trick I'll show you. Go into the costumes and go ahead and duplicate it a couple times. There we go. Now these are gonna be the explosions. All you have to do is grab these circles and then you're gonna like paint them the color red or gray or whatever and just draw circles on top like this and now draw a couple more that are gray oh, this isn't very gray that's very gray there you go boom boom okay then i'm gonna paint this one to even be worse boom 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 i love creating explosions Okay, then this one is gonna be like that. So now it just looks like that. Doesn't that look like an explosion? Okay, here you are, normal, and then boom, you're gone. So let's go back to the code, say wait until touching taco. We're gonna broadcast game over, and then we're gonna do this cool switch of costumes. So go into the looks, and we'll say, oh, where's this switch costume? Right here, switch costume to costume, not costume one, we'll go costume two, Duplicate it, costume three, there. And then put a little bit of time in between them using the control, whoops, there, using that control weight. So we'll use like a 0.3 seconds in between them. The only thing you have to remember is you'll need to switch it to costume one when the game starts. So we're kind of, there we go. When the game starts, costume one. If it touches that, then it goes into this explosion mode. And after it switches to that final one, you'll want it to actually hide. Boy, I'm getting really complex, but it's gonna look really cool in the end. Here we go. So we'll, we'll switch it to that costume. We'll have it wait 0.3 more seconds before it actually hides. 0.3, there it is. And we'll need it to show at the very beginning of the game. So since we use the hide, now we need to use the show. Boy, that's a lot of code right there just to create that cool ending. Here it is. Touch, boom, and it's over. That's pretty cool. Now the final thing is we need a game over, like the words game over. So let's paint a new sprite. Well, I'm not going to use a backdrop because I still want the stars in the backdrop. Ooh. I'm not gonna choose a sprite, I'm going to paint a sprite. Here it is, and I'll just say the words, game over. And I'll want them to be in the, something that's really visible on here, so I'll probably want like white. There it is, oops, I didn't make it quite big enough, so I'll use the selector there. There we go. There, put it right in the middle. That looks really nice. Now the code is very simple for this. It's just when the game starts, hide itself. Hide, there we go, hide. And then of course I need the show as well. And when are we gonna show it? When we receive that special event that we made called game over. When I receive game over, show. Here we go, there it is. Let's just shoot one just to make sure it works. And then let's let one hit us and it's game over and we blew up. When we restart the game, it works. It's really cool, I like it a lot.